Hey, what's up, AML family? We are here with the lovely Nora. You know, thank God she's alive. She got her blue Smurf hoodie on. <laughs> Nora, the artist. How you doing today, Nora? I'm okay. Very emotional. Yeah, you know how it goes, Nora. Emotional is good. You, that shows you you're not a rock. You got feelings, you know? What's, what's been going on with you? Um, same stuff. I, uh... I don't know, please forgive me. I'm like, really embarrassed about the way that I look. I feel like a dirt ball. My teeth are so bad. What's wrong with your teeth? I myself, I got a tooth problem too. I gotta get some tooth pulls. So you're not alone. Is it I, the same thing with you? Yeah, well, they're just, they're rotting away from not taking care of myself. Yeah. It's and all the chemicals that I'm putting in my body are just, uh, you know, um, eating me alive, I guess. Yeah. And you are, you are a person who wants to change, but you're in a circle. Remember that picture you sent me of the well? The hamster on the well? That's mm -hmm. how you feel? Well, I'm happy you went to spend Thanksgiving with your family. How was it like? Yeah, oh, uh, Christmas I spent with them. Oh, Christmas, yeah, my yeah, bad. Um, it was, it was nice. I, I was, I, I love being home with them. Um, which is, I always have to, uh, I can never stay long. I always have to end up running back down here. And we understand because it's physical, you know, when something is physical, it's no joke. It and controls not, you. Yeah, and it's not that it's not that big, but it's still there. So it's um, it doesn't matter. Like, uh, I don't know. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. I'm always if I'm in this lifestyle, I'm always going to have to have a chain on me. It's a, it's a ball and chain. Yeah. So for for the new people who just joining or can you just give them a backstory on on you? Yeah, I um I just realized the other day that I've been I'm going my fourth year out here. I can't believe it's been that long. I uh I've struggled for um I guess the past uh, 16 years now, 17 maybe almost 20 years now. Uh, struggled with drugs. Uh, often when I've had a few stints of sobriety, um you know a couple years here and there, but uh. I always end up um, coming back to this lifestyle, and uh, so the past four years almost, I can't believe it, but um, I've been out here on the street, uh, I've been waiting on housing, um, and at certain points, was you know, I was in a shelter at one point, a couple shelter, and was given a voucher, and then ended up getting kicked out of there for, for fighting, um, and, uh, and lost that, but there, I'm still, eligible for other things. I just haven't been able to stay connected with them um, too much. So it's been hard to, to stay on top of that. But I've, uh, I've, you know, I want to, I keep saying I want to get help and, um, you know, but I know how to do it and I want to do it this way and I want to control everything and micromanage and it's just, it's not working. Um, I don't, uh, I've been in this relationship that just, um, it's just very toxic now. And, um, I don't want this for myself. I don't want this for my son. I don't want this for, you know, for my parents. I mean, even, uh, you know, Irish, the, the, the guy that I've been with, I don't want this for him either, even though we're not, in a, you know, we're not too nice to each other right now. I still, I want better for him too. But, um, I don't know. I, there's a lot of um, a lot of damage I've done to myself that I, I uh, I'm gonna need a lot of help with to to recover. I don't um, I don't know. I, I want to be healthy. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't want to cry every day. And we don't want to lose you. We don't want to lose Irish neither. We don't want to lose nobody out here because there's so many people who are dying now of this mm -hmm. trank. And xylazine is eating yeah. people away. Oh my God, it's awful. Mm -hmm. A lot of our friends are gone. Yeah, and it's sad. So how was it when you when you saw your son on Christmas? How was it like? It was um, it, it was nice. I, he's a he's a young man now. I guess fifteen, and um, he's a, such a beautiful person. Yeah, I'm sure he miss you all the time. He does. Uh -huh. And 
really miss him too. My heart just aches for him. But I, I want to be um, what he deserves. He's so smart. Mm. He knows that uh, you know that I'm not healthy, but he still he, he doesn't judge me. He, he loves me anyway, and he just wants me to get better. I don't have to prove myself to him. Loves you unconditionally. Yeah. You know. It was this question I wanted to ask you. It was just in my head too. Damn, I forgot about it. So if you can go back in time, what would you tell your younger self? Um, that is important. It, it's important to <laughs> to learn how to adult and uh, to to get those things. Um, I don't know. I feel like I I jumped past that that stage with taking responsibility and and um you know making responsibility a habit and i just i went right over that that uh <laughs> that stage of my life and you now i'm still i'm still dependent on the people around me anybody in my life i'm not i don't bring anything to the table anymore and um and it's not me i don't want to be that that person um you know always with their hand out and uh uh, it's not me. I'm not comfortable being like that. Yeah. yeah. So, Nora, what do you think you need to get you, you know, off drugs and and, and stay off drugs? What do you think you need? Uh, a purpose. Uh, like, I need, I need to be to keep busy with um, with other things that that you know that make make me feel fulfilled. Like, uh, it's. I, I don't know. I, I wonder. They, you know how they tell you when you're young to find it, find a job where you can be your own boss and you don't have to work for anybody. Um, I mean, that's not necessarily what I'm saying, but I, I just I want to, you know, wake up and want to wake up and want to get up and go about my day because there's things, you know, that I that I have to do that are that I want to do and that make me feel good at the end of the day and proud of myself and. You know, happy that uh, that I can do things for others, and um, that's wonderful. I just want to find out what uh, what God has me here for. Well, you're still alive, so He definitely got a purpose for you. You have had some clean time before, right? Mm -hmm. How long was that? How, how I mean, how how long was your clean time? Um, the last time I was sober was uh, almost three years. That's beautiful. That is so amazing to hear that. And how do you do it? I was, um, I was actually living in a recovery house, and then um, it was pretty laid back, though. It was a, uh, I was in a comfortable environment, but it was a, uh, it was one based around recovery. Um, I got a job and was, um, you know, my my parents were they were still helping me with with what I needed, but I was for the most part trying to. Do things on my own. I went and um, I was working. I, w I was able to go and finance a car for the first time, and um, I was, uh, you know, paying rent and showing up for work and showing up to pick up my son on the weekends and spending time with him. And um, but I, w I was still. I mean, the, the reason, well, what, not the reason, but when I relapsed, it was everything uh, in my life just kind of caved in at, at, in one weekend I I lost the um I lost the job I lost my housing I, um, a relationship that I was in ended and I just decided to um that I didn't want to be miserable and sober anymore so I made a conscious decision to go back to misery and um I uh I guess within uh, within a few months, I was um, out on the street. And it, it breaks my heart to, um, when I think about it, to to realize that, you know, I, I made that choice to, to walk away from my son. Because my, my parents, they were never, um, at the time, because I had lost uh, the house that I was, <laughs> the living arrangement that I was in. Um, and went back to my parents, and uh, they've never, like literally threw me out on the street because, um, you know, it was always because of something I did. I, you know, they couldn't take the 
the drugs anymore and they couldn't take the lying and um, just the me not being dependable and they, they would give me a choice and I always chose this. It just, it makes me sick. So it, it got control of you. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on. So sorry that, you know, you chained to this beast. So many people, you know, are fighting to get away from it just like you. And one good thing about you, at least you have tried, you keep on trying, so that's a beautiful thing. You don't you, you don't quit, you keep on trying. You have you try to sober New Jersey, you try previously before then, you was claimed three years. So you know you have been trying. So yeah. just keep trying, like what they say, you'll get it right one day, right? Yeah, just don't quit. I can't I cannot accept this for my life. I'm at I'm a 30. I'm 36 now, and I can't believe it. But I didn't. I never thought that I'd be here, and I, I feel like I'm at a turning point now, where either uh, this will be my life if it even lasts that that long, or um, or I can do something about it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm. I've been thinking a lot lately about um, you know, I'm at the age where I could lose one of my parents any day or mm. something like that. You know. Um, yeah. And it's just, it's scary. I have a, uh, an uncle who we just found out um, is really sick. You know, all of a sudden it, it came out of nowhere. Mm. And um, so, and they gave him, you know, they didn't give him, him a lot of time left. So what if that happens in, in my family or, I don't know, I just, I can't. Yeah, I don't want to be this person anymore. So what's your living status right now? Uh, still homeless. I am. Um, I know do you don't you don't sleep on the streets, do you? So, well, if I'm on if I'm on the streets, I just won't sleep. Uh, I I was um, you know in a in a tent for a while, and and then I was staying with a, at a you know kind of kind of like couch surfing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's basically it. I. Uh, where you, where did you sleep last night? Uh, I didn't sleep last night actually. What? Uh, you yeah. haven't slept yet. <laughs> No, wow. I, I I fell asleep a little bit on the um, train and uh, <laughs> but that's it was only for, I didn't I wasn't trying to so mm -hmm. um, and that's the lifestyle this th that this comes with nightmare uncomfortable nightmare it tricks your mind to think that you're all right but you're not really all right you're dying slowly you know and so many people who love you and care about you and it's not just you you doing it to everyone because you know people are really believe in you and I'm sure you believe in yourself but you just got it it's hard in the beginning but then it gets easier and you you'll get it done so don't never quit you know just stay positive you know we're gonna get into some art and hope that keep you busy and you start putting out t-shirts and things like that you got that stuff to look forward to you got you know a, a clothing line to look forward to you got your son to look forward to this doesn't have to be his picture of you in Kensington, it could be, oh, my mom put herself together, she's an artist, she's doing great. You can do it, Nora, just yeah. believe in you. One day at a time, nah, matter of fact, one second at a time, mm -hmm. all right? So, what do you have to say to all the wonderful people, we, we about to wrap it up. What are you about to say, well, what do you have to say to all the people who are rooting for you? Uh, um, thank you for your support. Uh, you don't know how much it means to me to still have you know people that are that believe in me um, and that uh, that know that this is not me and that uh, that you know your your prayers and support um, are, are really uh, pushing me because I, I want to make you everybody proud and uh, you know do right by all the uh, well everything that everybody's done for me this whole time it was all everybody's been so kind and accepting and um but that's it that's it's not a you know i don't want anybody to have to accept this anymore because i don't want to accept it either mm -hmm. yeah so aml family you know we about to wrap things up with nora i'm glad you know we linked up today she got my number we we took we you know messaged each other you know I'll, I'll stay positive in her life and i hope you know one day our words will strike that nerve where she's gonna be like you know what i'm tired it's 
I'm tired of this, you know? And it's she'll coming. she'll do it. And yeah. when she do it, it'll be a game changer. I've met people out here in Norway that I've interviewed and they look hopeless, but now they're clean, they got jobs and everything. So I know no one is hopeless. Mm -hmm. So AML family, Nora, you have is there anything you're in need of that we can help you with? Uh well I've I've again, I mean, lost everything. Um I uh I I do need a uh, help if if I if I go to, or when not if but when I go away um, anything uh, would be very much appreciated for uh, you know just like hygiene and uh, clothes and um, stuff like that. Oh yeah, we definitely got your back once you go. You. you know, doing that, we'll definitely uh, maybe sure. um <clears throat> any uh, help to keep me occupied and um, maybe keep my hands busy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, AML family, thank you so much for this little, I mean, thank you so much for hearing Nora, you know, update, you know, continue to keep her in your prayers. She got wonderful parents who really love her. She got a handsome son, you know, she got a beautiful family and they just want to want her to see how beautiful she is. Mm -hmm. So don't quit, Nora. So guys, don't be bitter, be better. Until next time, Nora, Mal, we out there. Peace out. It's driving me insane Silence rattles in my brain Yeah, I gotta get away Always waiting for the fall So I build my tablets tall Wandering through these empty halls Break the cycle now Walls are coming down Yeah, yeah, yeah